My name is Mac. I'm in a band called Super Chunk. We're from Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and uh, we're playing a show here tonight. <laughs> We started the band in 1989, actually, the bass player Laura and I started the band. Chuck, who the band was named after, and we were just called Chunk originally. It's the drummer, Chuck Garrison, a guy named Jack McCook, who was a guitar player. About a year later, Jim Wilbur, who's the guitar, uh, the guitar player now, joined the band. I, I knew him from some friends at school. I went to school in New York, and he was at school in uh, Connecticut. John Worcester, who was our drummer, joined in 1991. It's been the same lineup ever since then. And I think the key to uh, staying together this long was a couple things. One is that we've always been in, in control of you know our music and our art. We put our records on a label that Laura and I own. I, I think that helps a lot. A lot of bands sign to major labels and when they get dropped they're totally in debt and you know they don't have someone to put out their records and they're seen as a little bit like uh, you know, as a pariah to the rest of the industry, even if they're a really good band. And so I think that that's why a lot of bands break up and we've never had to go through that. We tour a little bit less than we used to. We put out records only once every two years now instead of once a year. Slowing down the whole cycle, I think, just uh, gives you a little time to breathe in between what you're doing. We've always been from Chapel Hill. People sometimes ask us, you know, why, don't, why haven't you moved to New York or why are you still in a small town? It's much easier to be in a band in a small town than it is in a big city because it's expensive to live in a place like New York and if you're in a band, you're not making a lot of money. Chapel Hill's a college town and it's got a, a good network of things that keep it musically active. There's a good radio station, a couple of them, WXYC at Carolina and WXDU uh, at Duke University are both really good places to hear new music and then you can come to a place like the Cat's Cradle, which has been around, you know, basically like 20 years. This is where I came to see bands uh, when I was in high school. If you live in a town that it's fairly inexpensive to live in. You can go see good bands. You've got friends here. Why would we move? Laura and I started Merge in 1989, and at the time we were just putting out seven-inch singles and cassettes, and 
it's grown over the years, obviously, and um, now there's a bunch of bands signed to merge, and uh, we put out probably between 10 and 15 full-length CDs a year. There's about five other people who work there. Um, so when we go on tour, the label keeps going. There's a woman who's playing with Super Chunk on this tour named Annie Hayden. Um, she's playing with us tonight. We put out a record of hers earlier this year. If you listen to Lamb Chop and um, Spoon and Super Chunk and um, Third Eye Foundation or you know name any other bands on the label, the Magnetic Fields, it doesn't all sound the same. And I think that's one of the reasons that the label's been successful. Independent music. When we first started, it wasn't big business, and it wasn't acknowledged by big business, meaning you know major record labels. Even though you know Super Chunk doesn't sound like you know Minor Threat, and Pavement doesn't sound like you know Black Flag or something, I think that there's still like at the time, you know, in the late '80s, I think there was still that a similar feeling of like you know an underground kind of feeling. People in bands like Sebado and Super Chunk, I mean, we grew up listening to punk rock. We've tried to retain a little bit of that spirit or as much as possible actually even as our music has sort of gotten um, a little bit more diverse, a little bit more dynamic. When Nirvana got popular and that that's sort of when all of a sudden every band was getting signed and then what you ended up with was basically like a bunch of watered down versions of good bands that were selling lots of records. And there's still a lot of small labels putting out good putting out good music. And I think that it is still possible for kids to get that feeling of like, oh this is this special band that only my friends and I know about and you know, people get really excited about bands like that, and I think Bell and Sebastian is a good example of that. Even though they're huge, they're still perceived as being sort of this outsider group of musicians. That feeling still exists, and maybe it's not as easy to, to sort of like find as it was, you know, 15 years ago. <laughs> Tell me if it's where you are